Benjamin, please be seated. Don't shoot the messenger this morning. The launch of the special agro-industrial processing zone in Nigeria represents a major step in enhancing food security and enabling the agricultural value chain to perform optimally. The agricultural sector was pivotal in pulling our economy out of recession and is the, is the single largest employer of labor. So we must incentivize agriculture through greater investments and an enabling environment for private sector participation and to advance our national agro-industrialization drive. This government-enabled and private sector-driven initiative will mobilize private sector investment to develop value chains for selected strategic crops and livestock in the participating states. Ogun is one of the eight states designated for the first phase of the project which has mobilized over half a billion dollars. Reputed for its vast arable land measuring over 12,000 square kilometers and its agricultural prowess in cassava and rice cultivation coupled with extensive infrastructure development programs alongside deliberate plans and policies of the state governor to boost industrialization, the Gateway State appears ready for what is to come. I, Adidako, Olusheru, Abiyodun, do solemnly swear that I will be faithful and be a true allegiance to the federal government of Nigeria Following the inauguration of the present administration in May 2019, the quest to build an enabling environment for businesses to thrive took a prime position in the scheme of things. Governor Dagba Biodum, armed with an in-depth understanding of the place of plans, policies and processes in birthing successful ventures, decided to replicate similar templates in running the affairs of the state. In the past, you find out that the government enters into agreements, MOUs with private parties, with private companies, uh, partnerships that are oftentimes are skewed in favor of those parties to the disadvantage of government, or at times even skewed in favor of government. And these causes a breakdown in that relationship. So we felt that if we are really trying to reposition the state, we must have a PP office that ensures that our agreements are, you know, in line with world best practices. We set up the Ogun, what we call Ogun Invest, Ogun State Investment Promotion and Facilitation Agency. And that's basically an agency that is charged with the responsibility of shoring up, showcasing our competitive advantage, why you need to be in Ogun State. And the other policy firm we had was to establish what we call the Business Environment Council. That council is a council whose main responsibility is to ensure that your experience coming to do business in Ogun State is not faced with red tape. So all the bottlenecks that you would have to deal with, either you are uh, asking for a permit from the physical planning, or you are trying to interface with the industry trade and investment, or you are trying to uh, get your title from uh, the land department, that they actually handhold you, navigate through all that with you. It's like having a, an account officer. Today, Businesses in the state are testifying of the impact the administration has had on their operations. Uh, personally, for me, uh, Ogun State hasn't had it better than what we have now. Um, the, the governor has made it his personal you know, mission to ensure that every in, uh, industry is enabled, i.e. creating uh, an ecosystem within the state where the value chain remains within the state we're creating jobs, we're adding value, and we're bringing, you know, 
uh, both foreign exchange and local business into the fore. By, this, by so doing, you create a lot of direct jobs, you create a lot of indirect jobs, and business will, businesses will continue to thrive. Honestly, Ogun states have been a hub for manufacturers, and uh, we are happy that we have a good environmental condition that switch some of our equipment and every other thing for be able to produce solid state devices. You know our industry is, is a semiconductor industry which is purely electronics and we are the number one metal manufacturer in the country today. So we appreciate the government for their effort. Along the line, the governor took his programs a notch higher by making infrastructure development a major pillar of his administration as captured by the Ishaya Mantra. He embarked on massive construction of roads in all the senatorial districts of the state, including the Shagamu Abelkta Expressway, Ijebodi Ekbe Road, as well as the long abandoned Aton Lusada Agbara Road, which leads to the heart of the biggest industrial estate in the country. The infrastructure there are left to rot for so many years by previous administration, such that Industries, out of frustration, started relocating some, not just out of Agbara, but even to neighboring countries. You know, we are, we are gateway to Benin Republic, uh -huh. so as well. So some of them targeting Nigeria market or shifting base to places like uh, Benin Republic. Of course, the governor said, this, 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 this is, is not good enough for our economy. And uh, he made a deliberate policy, he made it as a deliberate policy to, to fix the infrastructure decay in that axis. And today, the costliest road to be constructed by this administration in terms of uh, uh, cost is the Aton Lusada Agbara Expressway. Governor Dagbo Abiodun guided by the understanding that there is a nexus between poverty and insecurity, found a way to surmount the challenge, initiated a job portal to provide employment opportunities to indigents of the state. So congratulations to all our newly employed graduates who will be giving their letter of employment today. Today, over 40,000 people have benefited directly from the opportunities created in the agricultural value chain, with more set to be onboarded as the groundbreaking of the Ogun State Special Agro-Industrial Processes Zone takes place. This is just another testimony to um, the fact that His Excellency Prince Dapabiodo MFR, the executive governor of the state, um, he, he keeps his promises. He has always been keen on ensuring that we raise the industrial profile of Ogun State. Um, so this is a game changer for us because if you look at you know um, operations of industries, really availability of their inputs, their raw material, is a key success factor for any industry. And working in an organized manner such as this, um, such that their um, inputs can be reliably predicted, um, they can have a say in the quality and the quantity, strengthen the relationships with the entire supply chain, it's really, really exciting for us. And um, for me, um, Ogun State, is actually on the path to even greater things than before. In, in some of the products that uh, Ogun State is being penciled down for this, which is, I'll give you an example, high quality cassava flour. You need to start the production and finishing within 24 hours. 
That means harvesting, uh, peeling, uh, uh, turning into flour. Every other thing must be within 24 hours. And then the hub is here. The farm may be in one of the um, agricultural transformation centers that might be 20 or 30 kilometers away. So it takes care of logistics. It takes care of road uh, from the processing uh, factory to the farmer. It takes care of transport logistics. It takes care of job along the value chain. That is what is special about this zone. As it's special, the benefit is also special because it's, in, it's inclusive. My brother in the village that is producing cassava, my uh, friend that is a transporter, a uh, factory worker, a uh, consumer. So it's, it's, it's the only zone facility that can take care of peculiarity of agriculture. You've heard about problems of agriculture. It's everywhere. We, it, it, when we start agriculture in the primary school, we start learning pro problem of agriculture. When you go to secondary school, problem of agriculture. When you go to university, problem of agriculture. When we are even a problem of agriculture, this is the zone that can take care of problem of agriculture. Because we can't say because we have problem of agriculture, we, we won't eat. We are on track to create um, hundreds of thousands of jobs. Um, we're on track to actually activate um, additional growth in the economy of Ogun State. We're on track to enhance the profile of the state and by implication the profile of Nigeria. In the last three years or so or four, the governor has impacted on over 40,000 individuals that are benefiting from greater value chain opportunity. The figure will double on the SAPZ. And SAPZ is special. It's like, bam, opportunity for everybody that is splashing. Even if you don't want it, it's, it's splashing on you. So it's either left for you to rub it up or grab it. So it's like sprinkling opportunity. And the state is supporting this with center for infrastructure, where there will be gas connection, where there will be electricity, where there will be road, where there will be buyer and where there'll be seller. So it's an exclusive opportunity that we are not leaving everybody behind. Even if you are behind, people say, come in, come in, come in, come in, come, come in. And you know our people, we like money, we like to spend money. It's just the opportunity. The opportunities are here in Ogun State. And I want to thank uh, the governor, the governor of the year in agriculture for two consecutive years for capping it up with this. The Remo Economic Industrial Zone is a key industrial development zone tapping into the Ogun State's agro potential. The Remo EIZ is strategically connected to major Nigerian cities such as Lagos to the south, Ibadan to the north, and Benin City to the east. Its proximity to different modes of transport, namely inland and seaports, and the cargo airport strengthens the viability of the project. The vast population of neighboring cities within 50 kilometers of the zone boosts our social and economic positioning, especially since the EIZ plans to create around 400,000 direct jobs. Spread over a total area of 5,100 hectares at the Sagamu Junction, the three parcels are envisaged to be developed in phases. A 970 hectare area will be developed within parcel one, with a first subphase of Remo EIZ being proposed. Operations are to commence in 18 months, followed by consecutive phases 18 months after, hereby developing a state-of-the-art agro-processing zone incorporating circularity and zero waste processing. Logistics play a key component in this development. In this regard, the inland container depot and truck parking are also a major part of this development.
the multimodal transit for goods and stocks is well provided for within the zone. The railway siding within Parcel 1 supports an ecosystem facilitating competitive transportation solutions. The Aerotropolis development is a hospitality retail commercial hub, supporting the upcoming cargo airport and future passenger terminal. The cargo airport, which is under development, is expected to assume passenger terminal status soon. With its network of well-serviced roads, its single window clearance system, dedicated fire station and other imperative facilities, the Remo EIZ is set to become a world-class industrial zone. This brightens the prospect of Remo EIZ, with its industrial processing zone planned for 3,200 hectares, accompanied by commodity-specific warehousing spanning 492 hectares. To support the smooth operation of Remo EIZ, Uninterrupted power supply is planned through captive gas-fired power plants. Water supply and wastewater treatment follow our targeted sustainable development goals, ensuring our commitment towards a climate-conscious green industrialization. A mixed density housing has also been planned within phase one, strengthening the live, work, play concept towards a sustainable life and livelihood. Let me at first acknowledge those that perhaps without whom we will be here today. Let me acknowledge the contribution of someone who is not here, but who is here without his spirit, Dr. Akiumi Adeshino, the president of AFDB, African Finance Development Bank. Dr. Adeshino, as soon as I was sworn into office, he persistently motivated me that I must set up an agro-processing zone, citing the Gabon success story. He later invited me to Cote d'Ivoire, where I met Gagan Gupta virtually and I immediately keyed into this concept. I must then proceed to acknowledge and thank President Ben Orama, who I later called. And I said to him, President Orama, I was in Abidjan, and there was one man that spoke to us virtually. His name is Gagan Gupta. Can you find this man for me? So I said, Gagan, ha I funded him. When are you going to be in Cairo? And the rest is history. 
I sat down with him. He keyed into the model that we were promoting, my team and I. He arranged for a physical meeting between Mr. Gagangupta, Arise, and myself. Without the trust and confidence of Professor Rama that he has in me, which was the basis of the reference in the first place, we definitely would not be here today. Of course, all this had to be backed up with the requisite financing. And I want to thank the EFC, led by my brother, Mr. Samala Zubiru, because if they didn't and weren't convinced that this project, according to them, is properly de-risked, that is the word they use, the project is de-risked, they will not be supporting this project. And as they say, many people have ideas and they remain in the sky. If there's no funding, it continues to be a pipe dream. This, in my opinion, is a further testament to the re-established trust between government and the private sector. We will continue to earn your trust and never take it for granted. Our policies and programs will remain people-oriented and enabling for the private sector to thrive. We will continue to be deliberate, focused, and undistracted. You all have seen from the presentation what this place will look like in the next few months. We give all the glory to the Almighty God for giving us the audacity to be bold in dreaming big and implementing. Today, Oku State is our judge to be one of the safest, if not the safest state in the country. Well, President Rama has said it all. Otherwise, they'd have been in Anambra. Anagro Cargo International Airport, within the same economic development cluster, is getting set to be commissioned. Governor Dagwa Biodun has demonstrated a rare mastery of the arts and science of economic development. Every agro, if agro allied uh, product requires some other industry. There are so many interfaces of industry that will spring up. The processing industry, the packaging industry, and, and the hotel will spring up to complement those efforts of the, of the government in terms of airlifting and every other thing. Because when you bring in your goods, you need to stay in, in, a, in an hotel. So a lot of hotels will spring up. And these are commendable efforts by this present administration. We give kudos to him. That is just the icing on the cake for us. Uh, for me, uh, Agro produce have short uh, shelf life, so the quicker you can get it to where they will exchange money for it, the better uh, chances you have of, of ensuring that whatever you're producing, you get revenue for it. So by having access to an airport, which is also in uh, is next door to the SAPZ, you know it just ensures that even though I get the it's just one more step in the value chain in getting it to the end client. So whether the the, the off taker or the end user is within our shores in Nigeria. You can fly it to any part of Nigeria. And if it's offshore, you can also do the same and get value for it. And to cap it all, the government is working with world class investors that have performed incredibly well in other clients. So if it works somewhere, it will work better in Ogun State because this is a land of opportunity. And we have a governor that has been acknowledged all over the world as what the master player in industrial uh, revolution the governor of the year in agriculture for one two three years what else do we want let's join the train and make money <laughs> just welcome the excellency that will be our governor of one state little wonder it was conferred with an award for excellence in industrial revolution by president muhammad Buhari. You know, 
I know we will continue to support you. You have our, uh, our support 100%. Just as you have supported us, we can only continue to reciprocate by, you know, lauding your, your activities, your vision for the state and the policies that is promoting business and, and the economy of Ogun State. Thank you so much. We are, we are praying for you to be able to have the strength, the audacity to keep creating more of an enabling environment for industry to, to strive in the states. The past three years under the leadership of Prince Dakwabiodo have seen Ogun State continue to break barriers, conquer territories, and now ready to take its rightful place on the world stage. The journey continues. This is a promise-keeping administration. We will continue to serve you. We will only make promises that we intend to keep. We are a promise-keeping administration. Ready and willing partners.